Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Garage Band Weekly Drums Edition. I hope you're doing well, and uh, I hope you're ready to talk drums and nothing but drums for the next hour, because, look, it's not my strong suit. I'm going to be honest with you there, uh, which means that I need to spend more time learning about it. And uh, I have tried to learn about it, and I'm going to talk to all of the things that I know about garage band drums in the next uh, hour. So uh, I hope you're ready for that. That's the smart drums that you're seeing there. They are one of the options, just one of the many options that you have when it comes to drums here in Garage Band on iOS. And look, we're going to focus on iOS because that's my wheelhouse, man. Uh, there's plenty of other drum videos for Garage Band on Mac and for Logic. A lot of the concepts, though, in Garage Band iOS really easily translate over to GarageBand Mac. There's not a heap of difference. You've still got things like the beat sequencer. You've still got the drummer. You've still got your manual drums. They just work slightly differently. And you could even argue that in iOS, because you've got things like an actual physical drum that you can tap on your screen, it's even a little bit better. Because here in, uh, in GarageBand iOS, we can actually use a real, real, we can use a virtual drum kit to actually play in our drums like so. So you've got a whole lot of options here for drums. We're going to get to that in just a little minute, but we are going to uh, do a couple of things before we do that. We're going to say g'day to the fine folks who are here with us live, and we are going to uh, talk about some news and notes from the week. So I hope you are doing well, and uh, I hope you're ready for a little bit of garage band goodness. G'day to uh, Joe and Barry Glenn. Hello, Jade Star. Hello, Thomas Christ. Hello, Frigsy doing the blanket. Uh, hello. Yeah, very, very late slash early there for Frigsy <laughs> in uh, in his time zone. Uh, g'day to uh, Princess LDG's Kingdom. Uh, hello to Gregory O'Sullivan. Good morning to you and uh, anyone else who I have missed. I hope you are doing well. Uh, if you do have questions, don't worry. You can actually ask questions. The easiest way to do is to put the word a question or a big Q in front of you. Not Q for QAnon. We're not talking about Q that today. Uh, but Q for question, because that will uh, let me know that you have a question. And I will definitely endeavour to get to any questions you have, especially related to drums. But anything else is fair game as well. And as always, we're not sponsored by anyone uh, anyone outside of the Studio Live Today family. We're sponsored by the Garage Band FAQ. So if you head over to studiolivetoday.com slash garage band, yep, really easy to remember. That's got all your answers. So a lot of the times I have to, I, I link to this. I get asked questions, people email me, people uh, put comments on my videos and that's all cool. But more often than not, Robot Pete has the answer already. So Flesh Pete is happy to talk to you and always happy to try and answer and help you out. But Robot Pete is a lot more reliable. He stays up much later and he's got all of the answers here. So you can jump in here and check out all the different uh, playlists of videos here on the channel, all the free resources. You can, of course, buy the guide. I recommend that for $10. If you're starting out in GarageBand, that'll get you started and learning. And then uh, we've got all of the questions that you could have here about automation, about background mode, how to change your bars, how to use compression, how to add delay, how to download GarageBand. Yeah, we, we, we'd cover everything, including the basics there. So a whole heap of information on my GarageBand iOS FAQ. Uh, let's talk about the news and the notes of the week. Uh, hello, who knows? I like GarageBand, one of my favourite apps. Mine too, mine too. Yeah, Robo Pete. Robo Pete's got the uh, got all the answers for sure. Um, hello, Barry Glenn, by the way, as well. And hello, Tom and Co. Always good to see you, my friend. Uh, g'day to uh, Sion, who is here as well. And uh, did I see Justin? Hello to you. Uh, g'day, everyone. And uh, yeah, once again, questions. Do, do put that cue in front so I can make sure I know that that's a question. Uh, I've got only one piece of news and notes this week because it's a pretty quiet time. The summer, not that Apple take the summer off, but we haven't had any major updates to iOS because iOS 16 is still in the works. The, I guess the one big news there is the public beta came out, meaning that if you want to try out the new iOS 16 or iPad OS 16 features, you can. You can just go, go to Apple, search iOS 16 public beta, download it and try it out. But please, can I tell you, do not use it on your daily driver device. If you have an iPhone or an iPad that you use every day for your daily activity or, you know, to make phone calls or message people, do not put a beta version of an iOS on there. It's, it's rarely a good idea to even put the latest version when it first comes out. Let other people be the testers. Let people like me be the guinea pig. But I don't even do public betas. Why? Because there's plenty of people out there already doing them. I watch them. 
And yeah, I've got multiple devices. I could put it on those devices, but I kind of use all my devices too when I'm making videos. And the last thing I want to do is be recording a tutorial and then suddenly I get some weird crash because of a latest version of iOS that I didn't predict. So uh, yeah, please heed the warning, turn automatic updates off and only download that public beta and try it out if you're really keen to try one of these features and you can install it on a device that you don't use every day. Um, Mark says, I've been working with GB for over for, for over for years and I just learned that you can subdivide the bases in the beat sequencer. Ah, can you? We'll, we'll, we'll look at that because we're going to do a bit of an interactive uh, in, interactive session here today. Uh, Acer, g'day to you. Just a warning. Apps like GarageBand that use VoiceOver's direct touch feature to send touch directly, not yet reliable in iOS 16 beta. Yeah, and, and that's a classic reason why you don't do it. Quite often by adding things and fixing things, there are unintended consequences and sometimes they break as much, if not more stuff than they fix with these updates here. Yeah, definitely wait for the official release. G'day Mike and Dawn, Janice and hello Clayton Von Kluge. Let's, uh, yeah, let's talk about the, the, the most, you know, Apple stuff is fine. You know, GarageBand stuff is fine. iOS stuff is fine. What's the big news? Oh yeah, it's Song Timber, baby. I'm getting myself prepared this year. Quite often uh, in previous years, it's been a bit of a rush to the start line for Songtember. This year, we're getting ourselves all set up. Yes, it is only July, but it is 42 days. to, And we know the answer to the life, the universe and everything is 42. It is 42 days until Songtember. And I thought I would just say, because I know we've had a lot of folks who've joined the community over the last year, that what is Songtember? Why do you do this? What's it all about? Well, I do a lot of tutorials about how to make music. I make tutorials about GarageBand, about Logic, and about music production in general, about recording music, about creating music, about releasing music with folks like DistroKid. What Songtember is all about is bringing that all together, making sure that you and I are actually applying all that theory, all that technical knowledge to the practical job of getting your music out there, of sharing your art. So Songtember is month. It's 30 days, and you've got 30 days to write, record, and release one song. It's as simple as that. It could be any genre. You can release it in any way you like. But the thing is, we do it together. You, you, it's good to do things by yourself sometimes. I had a chat with, uh, with Dan, the Lonely Rocker, this week on, on the Creator Town Hall, and he was talking about, yeah, you know, the beauty of the, the new world is you can do everything yourself. But he also mentioned in the same breath that he relies on a lot of people around his communities to help him out to collaborate with, to give him inspiration, to help pull him up when he's feeling down. They're all the things that we do in Song Temper. It will run the gamut. You'll see me frustrated. You'll see me happy. You'll see me creating good stuff. You'll see me creating absolute crap. It's all part of the process. So if you want to join in Song Temper, it's as simple as just following along. There's two places I'm going to be posting about it. It's Create Record Release Group on Facebook. That's the official Facebook group of Studio Live today. So you can join that one. It's in the link. I've put it in the chat here and you can jump over to this launch party down in the description of this launch party. If we go here, oh, YouTube have changed this now. Do you know this? You hit this little show more button. If you're wondering where your descriptions went, they're under this show more. So you can join the Facebook group there, create record release, or just go to createrecordrelease.com. Or I'm going to try sharing a lot more on Discord this year because we've got a Discord server for Studio Live today. Now there's a link there where you can join us on Discord. And uh, it, it's a, just a heck of a lot of fun. To be honest, uh, some great music has been produced through Songtember. Last year, we did the song Work in Progress, which we recorded in, in GarageBand. The year before, it was, um, well, oh no, what's the, the one? Uh, New Beginning. Yeah, New Beginning. And uh, of course, the, the OG 2019, in the before time, in the long, long ago, uh, Hold On was the song that, that we created. So I, I've managed to get three of my favorite songs that I've, uh, that I've written, recorded and released over the last three years have been a result of Song Timber. So I highly recommend it. It is just a great way to get involved with the community and uh, create a song. Uh, we use Cubasis 3 for Song Timber. <clears throat> uh, probably not. 
I, uh, it's a good question. And look, this is a garage band show, so I'm not going to go into detail here, but I have had a few folks kind of hitting the wall, uh, when it comes to, to garage band in the last few weeks in terms of the, all the different things that you can and can't do with garage band. And there are other options. I've explored them here on the channel. Go and check out all of the videos about these, but Cubases 3, this is one option that you have. This is, gives you a lot more, a uh, lot more options. Uh, you've got you know your master channel. You've got a, a, a proper proper mixer there that you can use. There's a whole bunch more effects. It's just a lot more of an in-depth program, but has a pretty steep learning curve. I did use it to create uh, one song. So if you go back, if you want to see me create a song in Cubasis, the song Time McFlies, uh, my 1.21. I did that in a month, uh, song in a month challenge around about a year ago. Uh, so yeah, you can go back in the through the archives and search for my Cubasis creation videos. But uh, not that I dislike Cubasis, I actually like it, but it, it adds a level of complexity that I often don't need for the type of music that I create. And it'll depend on you, and it'll depend on the type of music that you create. And to be honest, the thing we're talking about today, drums, drums are much better in GarageBand, in my opinion. I've found drums to be much more flexible and much more quality sounds and easier to manage in GarageBand. I'm sure there's plenty of people that disagree with me. Opinions are like buttholes, aren't they? <laughs> Everybody's got one. <laughs> All righty. Uh, we will continue on. Uh, so, uh, QBSs 2 and 3 are on sale at the moment. There you go. So, if you do want to go and try that out, you can do that. Uh, Russ says, I use GarageBand for the first time. Yes. And, and Russ created, a, created amazing music using, uh, well, not just using, I'm sure, but he did. He grabbed my course because the, the $10, $10 course is... Um, yeah, is available if you go to the uh, the FAQ, studiolivetoday.com slash garage band. Hey, Lou Reality, uh, $24.99 American dollars for Cubasis. Yeah, so it is an investment as well. And the other thing is, and you know, that they are a sponsor of the channel, so complete full disclosure on that one, but I've actually been digging BandLab in terms of something that gives you a few additional tools that GarageBand doesn't. BandLab's actually kind of it. Uh, no, apart from the fact that it asks you to turn on notifications every time you open it. BandLab dudes and dudettes, can we please remove that? Because I, I don't like notifications and I know you want me to notify of stuff, but if I turn notifications onto anything, I kind of get bombarded. I know first world problems, but I don't want them. But apart from that, you've got a whole lot more flexibility here in BandLab. So there's a heap more included loops and samples and things. There's a heap more options. Oh, they've, oh no, I was going to say, have they updated this? This looks a little bit slicker, but it's just because I've got this one um, soloed. Oh, hang on. They have multi-select on mobile. Oh, okay. There you go. Multi-select on mobile is here. I'm going to have to take a screenshot of that. Because I'm doing some band lab videos later today. No, no, not you, Siri. Just need a screenshot. Go, go away. Go away, Siri. I'm done with you. Siri, stop. <laughs> She's not listening. I'm not sure I understand you either, Siri. Uh, well, that's cool. So they've obviously given the mobile, and this is the cool thing about uh, kind of the opposite. BandLab have the opposite sort of mentality to GarageBand. GarageBand are like, let's just leave everything the same. And oh, look, you can merge regions for speedy editing. I'm, I'm going to have to, because I'll, I'll probably lose this the next time I come in here. So I'm going to have to take some screenshots. Oh, that sounded a bit weird. Some screenshots <laughs> of all of these. So that I can come back in here and, uh, and learn about them later. Uh, anyway, what was my point? Maybe later. Yeah, let's, let's, let's not try that now. Uh, yeah, they've definitely, they've definitely changed the... Oh, they've really changed the interface here. It looks a bit more colourful, doesn't it? Hmm, okay. I'm down. Uh, but yeah, the other options that you have here in, in BandLab as well. So if you're looking for another mobile solution that's a little bit different, that maybe has a few more options, such as, you know, your beat matching and your pitch matching, uh, your master fader, um, just a little, a, a few more built-in plugins that are a little bit sexier, then uh, BandLab is definitely something you may want to check out. And we've got BandLab videos right here on the channel. Uh, we'll answer a few questions, then we'll start cracking on with uh, with some drums. Um <laughs> I actually accidentally pushed the wrong button. Now I can't multi-select. Oh, that's 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 less than ideal. Uh, hello, Pickle, by the way. Hope you're doing well. Uh, g'day, Gary. Uh, still barely touched Cubases too. Uh, yeah, um, Cubases just seems to... It's it's the same with um, Logic. When I open it, it's just a little overwhelming. And uh, I don't tend to... Uh, I don't tend to, to like learning new things. I'm an old man now. I'm stuck in my ways. No, not really. But you know what I mean. Uh, I don't have a need for it. A question from Barry. If you have faders, does that mean you don't use automation to up the volume in certain parts? I hope my explanation makes sense. Uh, if you have faders. Um, 
so no. So your faders, you can faders will still set a static level, uh, if that makes sense. So if we go back to Cubases again, I know this is a Garage Band show, but just so we can give you a demo of this, if you uh, have faders. You can, so Cubase, I think Cubase has the ability to record live fader movements as well. I'm just going to pop your, your question away. Um, I think it does. You can still use automation, but I think, yeah, there's right mode here. So what you can do is you can actually ride the fader while you're actually playing back your song, and that'll record in your movements if you use the right mode. You can also just use automation just like you do in uh, GarageBand, where you actually uh, plonk them down and put your automation points in there. But it does give you some more flexibility. But yeah, your faders in Cubases are still just to set your static volume level for that channel, but it does give you a bit more flexibility. You can use it more like a real mixing board where you'd actually ride the faders. So you've got a vocal that needs to come in in the chorus. You can literally be listening back to your song and ride that fader in. So hopefully that's what you're referring to, Barry. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, I have Cubases 2. How is Cubases 2? I only have 12. <laughs> it's only 12 American dollars. Yeah, Q uh, Cubases 2, it's still pretty good. Um, it, it does the job. It just doesn't have some of the new fanciness of Cubases 3. I find the interface of Cubases 2 was a little more cramped. Uh, the, the Cubases 3 one kind of is more modular and a little bit more modern looking and just like you got your, your media, your keys and your mixer up the top there. Oh, don't you hate this? <laughs> don't you hate when you asked... <laughs> I almost want to give one star when I get that thing pop up. I'm like right in the middle of my workflow and you get that question pop up. Uh, but yeah, you've got, uh, I don't know, Cubasis 3 is just a little bit shinier. The reason that Cubasis 2 is still highly functional, still does all this, pretty much all the same stuff. But um, yeah, as uh, Sion says, look, you might as well go. If, you, if you're going to, uh, I wouldn't, I don't think Cubasis 2 is enough of an upgrade from GarageBand or BandLab to pay the dollars at all, to be honest, Leela. So yeah. Uh, Ditto 2, severely outdated. Yeah, so it is, it's older. It's definitely older technology. Uh, no compression like GarageBand on iPad is an advantage. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that would be better, much better automation. I'll get Joe onto that. <laughs> I love that Barry's just here getting ideas so he can then just hand pass them over to Joe. It's like, Joe, uh, you're learning Lubafusion. We need to make videos. Joe, you're learning Cubases 3. We need better automation. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyone know if it's possible to get the 2010 version of GarageBand? I don't know that. I'm, I've heard that there are some archives somewhere that have the packages for older Garage Bands. if you don't have them installed already. Apple make it ridiculously difficult to downgrade anything on, on both Mac and iOS. So if you've already gone to the next version, you kind of can't go back. But if you've got nothing on there, I think you can. But I'm not a Mac expert, so I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to have to put that one out there. If you want a definitive answer, I would jump over to the GarageBand Users Facebook group. I'm sure there is someone over there that would be able to answer a question like that. <laughs> yes, why would you buy the less, less expensive option? I'll go the free version. Get as much out of uh, free as you possibly can. That's what I say. Use and abuse the freeness of a lot of cool stuff. Should we crack on with some drums? Should we have a bit of a look at this? Uh, like I say, this is going to be a bit interactive and I've done drum videos like this before. So the first thing I'll say is if you want sort of more direct tutorial style content, jump down in the description. But beside each of the links there, there is a another video and you can actually check all of those out because I've got a heap of videos here on the channel already about drums and drama and uh, beat sequencer and smart drums and every type of drums that you can imagine in the known universe. So uh, do, do check those out. But today we're just going to have a bit of fun. I've grabbed my song Imagination. Uh, from the archives, and uh, I'm picking this one because I think we can uh, we can play around and, and redo some drums with this. Like it's it's a bit dry to just grab drums and go here is a drum beat. But if we've already got a song, we may want we may uh, benefit from coming in here and playing with this song before we actually create some drums. Three big tips about drums in GarageBand, but for everything as well. Number one, use drums early in your project. So drums should kind of be one of the first or second things you do. If you've got a hook, you've got a you know a synth part or a lead part or a guitar part or a vocal part, the metronome is okay for the short term, but replace it with drums as soon as you possibly can. So for instance, the metronome sound, and there's a few different sounds I know, but if we listen to that, that's not making me feel super groovy, right? But if I instead... Uh, have Benny in here, even just a default drummer sound of Benny doing his business. How's 
how much easier is it going to be for me to like play some bass or play some keys or some guitar or some vocals when I've got a drum, a real drum groove, as opposed to, uh, you know, just a little bit of nothing. <laughs> it's not even playing with it. Oh, there it is, metronome. So get your metronome out of there as soon as possible. I try to get a drum track in in the first one or two tracks just so that you can get that one out of the way. Drummer is your best placeholder because it's just super simple, as you'll see in a moment, super easy to just get drummer thrown in there. You can use the manual drums, but you'll just find you spend more time tweaking it, and then you start worrying about what fills you're going to put in, and then the whole thing goes a bit pear-shaped. So drummer is what I recommend to start with. And third tip is use multiple drum types. So you'll notice in this one, I've, I've got two drummers. So quite often I'll use two different drummers. So in this one, towards the end here, uh, well, for starters, we have this one because I had a specific drum sound that I wanted to put in here. So I just added the regular drum kit so it can actually just do this hit. So I wanted to add a second crash, so I just added that to the drummer. So you can run your drummer, and then you can run a, a regular drum kit at the same time. Let's just bring this one back up. Let's bring all these drums together here, just so that you can see what I've done on this track before. And then we're going to rebuild it. We're going to do it again. Uh, because I do have another drummer track here. We've got Anders bringing some heavy drums here towards the end. I've just got to find him. Let's zoom out to find Anders. Where are you, Anders? It is hard to... um. It's sometimes hard to find your, your different tracks here when, uh, there it is, when they're not coloured because GarageBand, like, it greys everything out when they're not soloed. So you, I find it hard anyway to, to find which track I'm looking at sometimes, especially drummer tracks because they look like audio tracks. They're not even MIDI tracks. So let's bring Anders up here. So right here at the end of this, this song, we bring together, we've got the original Benny Funky drums that he's doing there. And uh, in fact, we've, we've changed it up to Nicky. So here's another tip. There you go. Uh, additional tips here. We've changed from Benny to Nikki and then back to Benny, which you can totally do. So let's just take a listen to this passage that we have here of drummer. We go Benny into Nikki and into Benny and Anders bringing us on home. And then into... And if you know this song, the reason is that I have this big final chorus that I build to here. And this is where adding a second drummer can really work well. So let's just uh, listen to this bar and into this big thing with all the other tracks here. I just might need to turn it down a little bit. So yeah, it's a little bit a little bit loud there. In fact, we're gonna we're gonna use my little FX trick here because I think I might just need to uh, to drop the volume down a little bit because we've got a little bit too much loudness there. There you go. There's an additional tip there. If you don't know about that one, search my name, Pete John, the volume hack. You can basically use your FX track as a master fader, a makeshift master fader, which is kind of cool. Uh, so uh, so this is uh, this is what we've got going on at the moment. What I thought I would do is let's try the different types of drums and see what this track would be like. If we, uh, if we did these drums from scratch. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to firstly save out here and just make sure for the love of your deity of choice that I'm using a second version, which I am. So this is version two. <laughs> I'm not using my original track, which uh, is, is a good thing. Uh, so we'll, we'll jump in here. We'll delete out these drums. We're going to delete Benny, my hard work coding Benny and Nikki. We'll delete this crash. And uh, there you go. We've got a track with no drums. So, and again, I would always recommend that you add your drums at the start. Uh, Pickle mentioned uh, before, yeah, name your drums. Definitely name your drums. Do try to name your drums. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, your drums, your tracks. Because you can see here on this project, I didn't rename any of these tracks, so I really don't know what's going on. So, yeah, definitely rename your tracks is a good thing. Uh, and it really does bring you home, correct, indeed. Uh, hello, Gary Hubs. Cubasis, definitely the rainbow colors of Cubasis definitely makes that a lot better. It does make it easier to see things. Uh, still can't find a good jazz drummer except in jazz drummer. Uh, Bandlab, Gary, try it. Bandlab. The soft drums in Bandlab is actually not bad. Uh, jazz drummer by Lumpy, that is, yeah. Uh, and look, we're not covering, I'll, I'll start with that actually. We're not covering external apps here today. We're doing everything within GarageBand. But the other option is to try things like funk drummer, soft drummer, uh, jazz drummer. There's a bunch of cool different drummer apps and drum apps that you can bring in to uh, your GarageBand project. 
subjects if you want to. All right, let's uh, let's try the different techniques here. So first of all, we can uh, we'll grab this track. This is what it sounds like at the moment. Sometimes I sit around. So at the moment, it's not sounding so good because it doesn't have any drums. Definitely needs a drum beat in here. And uh, the original version has like a little start fill and then the drums there. So let's grab Drummer and I'll show you how we can create a Drummer track for this. So we're going to hit the plus button. We're going to scroll across because Drummer is not under drums. It's under its own special world of Drummer. Uh, and the first thing you can choose with Drummer is either acoustic, electronic or... Or percussion and if you just tap on more drummers it's actually going to give you all of the drummers so i kind of usually just tap all drummers and then i find who i want to go with here so um let's go with someone different for this one uh don't want to pop brush what about like a well maybe it's more of a disco track why don't we bring nikki here in the start or maybe gavin i'll go nikki we'll bring nikki in from the start of this one and uh let's just take a listen without touching anything to what uh, nikki's going to add here with her strobe lights beat yeah yeah that's not bad if i was creating this track and i wanted to use just you know, a metronome that wouldn't be too bad so yeah not terrible and would be a kind of cool metronome but we need to funk it up a little bit so we've got complete videos about drummer here on the channel so if you want to learn everything you can do that but in its simplest form drummer you've got a bunch of presets so we can choose a different one. So let's go with like more of a disco tech sound. And what this, what the presets do is they change all of these options over here. So I'll show you what those are in a moment, but let's just try this with the disco tech. Yeah, that's not too bad. You know what, I'm gonna get rid of that weird stereo bass to start with, because that's getting a bit distracting. Right. It works in the context of the song, but I reckon we'll just go with the regular, because we've got two basses in there. That's better. Uh, so, so there's our, our Nikki Disco. Now to, to change this, again, we can tap on there. And the cool thing about Drummer is that you can actually adjust what sections uh, go between each. So if you're using song sections in your song anyway, you can basically just come in here and line up your Drummer to your song sections. And that way, when you've got, say, the, the start of the song here, section B. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here. Because what you might want to do is, say, in this section, we want to bring it up here onto the onto the cymbals. You might want a slightly different sound uh, going from the opening. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here. And if I'm going under... Oh, that's kind of funky. I don't mind that at all. Uh, now, your fills down here is how many fills are going to be in there. So when you're setting it as a metronome, I recommend just turning your fills completely off. But you can up that and it'll add automatic fills, usually towards the end of a four bar or an eight bar section. You've got your cymbal control over here. So this will control what type of cymbals Nikki's going to be hitting there. So if we've got cymbals one on there at the moment, if we change it to two. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is up I on the right. if I'm going under all the complications of my life, all the times when I couldn't reach enough. Up on the crash. And of course, you can then come back down here to the hi hat, and you've got a whole bunch of different hi hat patterns like this. The knife in my back to the days when I was a little kid. Always worry about the things I never. That one's kind of cool. I like that. And then your kick and snare patterns. So you can get different kick and snare patterns here, and you've even got the ability to have half time and two times. So if we bring it up to like number six. Back to the days when I was a little kid. Always worry about the things. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's take a listen to the half time if you wanted to really kind of slow things down and go half time. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is. I got here and if I'm going and under time. all the complications of my life all the time <laughs> when I couldn't reach the knife in my back to the days when I was a little kid always worry about the things I never did always think about the next big problem even I kind of like that one I kind of like the halftime on that one kind of a little bit more laid back kind of groove so you've got a heap of options in here there's a bunch of other things you can do drummer follow is probably the the, the secret source here if you are a super lazy person like me then you can actually make your drums follow your bass so if, for instance in this one if we wanted to instead of having all these options generically we can actually hit the follow button 
and then we can actually ask it to follow this barely phased base up the top here. And what it'll do is it basically works out from the base, and it can be a, a virtual base or a real base, but it'll work out where those base hits are, and it'll make especially your kick and snare lock in with your bass groove. Take a listen. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here and if I'm going under all the complications of my life, all the times when I couldn't reach the knife in my back to the days when I was a little kid. How good is that? No hands, ma. No hands. No no expertise required. Just use the follow and uh, it'll do there. Uh, yeah, I like to mess around with which track to follow. It, what could be fun is uh, trying the follow on your vocals. So uh, actually, because I poorly named the vocal tracks on this one, I'm going to have to find out which one actually has my vocals. So it's this one. Let's just rename this one to, uh, to, to a different name. We'll just rename it. Oh, uh, yep. Oh, PJ. Pete Johns. All right, we've renamed that track to Pete Johns. So now if we go back to our drummer here, we can actually, and again, you can edit your drummers by hitting up there, or you can, if you go here and you tap it, and then you hit, actually we'll tap it here, and we'll hit the edit button here, like a soul. Uh, then we can actually make it follow, instead of the bass, we can actually make it follow Pete Johns. It can make me follow my vocals. And this gets you a pretty wacky sound sometimes. It does take a little, that little minute there was to, it processing that. So it goes and processes it, and now it's ready to go. So let's listen to this trying to follow my vocals. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here and if I'm going under all the complications of my life, all the times when I could... Could you hear it like pausing and trying to hit... Da, 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 trying to hit the kick and snare on my vocal phrasing. So, and here's the cool thing. I haven't done this for a long time, but you can actually beatbox your own drum beat and then follow that. Should we try that? Should we try that? Oh, I don't have a, I don't have a cable. Uh, I don't think. Man, I, I didn't prepare for this, but I could, you could actually record in, j just trust me on this, go away and try it in your own time because we're going to run out of time either. Uh, go away and try it. You can, um, yeah, you can beatbox. So if you just go, oop, and then make that track the follow for the drummer, your kick and your snare will line up with that. It's like ridiculous. It's cool. So uh, yeah, try that out. So drummer for the win, it's definitely the easiest way to go. Uh, and it's definitely the easiest way to add drums to your track. The other things that you can do here, so if you didn't want, if you wanted to use this as the metronome to start with, if you select all here and just join them, if you didn't want to have to do each one individually, you can join them all together. And then you can come in and re-split them to wherever you want. So especially if you're using it as a metronome, I'll, I'll always do that. I'll join, because when you add it, it adds it in like eight bar chunks. I just join it all together. Uh, then I turn off my fills, fills, <laughs> and I'll go back to following my bass, because this is kind of one of the ways that I do this. So th what we'll have now is a very static drum beat that's going to be sitting behind here that is going to be kicked linked in with my bass. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here and if I'm going under all the complications of my life. So if I'm doing everything else, that's going to really work for me because I, I don't need to uh, I don't need to stress about my drums. They're just created. So that's your drummer. They're very cool. They work a lot. Uh, someone was saying they have multiple drummers. I guess the only other thing I'll say is you can only have two drummer tracks. But if you merge your drummer track down to an audio track, you can keep layering them. So if I wanted to make this, in fact, let's do this. If I wanted to make this my metronome, all I need to do is merge this track. Once I've put all my settings in there, is I'll merge it down. And what it does is it turns that track here into just a regular audio track. So now, and that can be my metronome. And then I've still got two drummer tracks. So if you don't want to waste a drummer track, because you can only have two, if you don't want to waste a drummer track, merge your drummer track down into a audio track and then just call that metronome and then you're good to go. The good thing about that is too is it uses less processing because it's not actually having to do all that drummer processing. It is literally just playing back an audio file. Super duper handy. Uh, hello. Thank you, James, for following me on BandLab. Yeah, go, go over to BandLab. BandLab is pretty cool. Uh, join them, split them to structure of your song. Yeah, exactly. Verse, chorus, exactly. Adjust to taste. Totally, totally. It's a really easy thing to do. Uh, yeah, do, do the beatboxing thing. Just put in your own sound, just the rhythm. It could just be you clapping along. I wish we. I wish I had my microphone plugged in so we could do a test of it, but um, yeah, Dr drummers are always wasted. Oh, I, notice I haven't done a single drummer joke here today. Um, I'm, I'm being very good. Let's move on to drums, because drums are pretty cool as well. So if we come in here and we go to... Our drums, drums please, uh, we can choose our drums. All right, 
So drums, you've got a few different options here. You've got smart drums on the beat sequencer, which we'll show you in a moment. Your acoustic drums is just going to bring you into your your regular drums that you can play with here. You can change your kit up the top here. So you've got acoustics, electrics, percussions, and your custom. So acoustic kits are exactly what they sound and look like. I like things like the classic studio kit. I like the live rock kit. This is probably my favorite. Because it sounds good. And you'll notice that your drums are already processed. So when you're recording in drums, keep in mind that they've already got things like reverb, they've already got compression on them. They're a virtual instrument, and a lot of folks will play a virtual instrument, and then they'll go and they'll use their knowledge of recording real instruments, and they'll use that for drums. Problem there is you're double processing a lot of the time. Sometimes you don't need it, because listen to... Listen to the reverb on that kick and snare. It's already there. There's already quite a bit of processing on there. Playing drums is as simple as playing drums. So if you know how to play drums, you just have to do it with your fingies. So uh, let's just um, hit the record button. And you record your drums in. <laughs> so in this case, we're recording the drums along to the original drummer which is a fine thing to do. You can do that. And then of course you can come in here and edit your drum performance. So if you don't like it, you can come in here and you can use all the MIDI editing under the sun to edit all your different notes, to edit the timing, to do a whole bunch of cool stuff. The other thing, the trap for young players here with your drums is that by default, GarageBand in its infinite wisdom will often put the quantization on here. <laughs> and oftentimes you don't want no stinking quantization. Quantization will line it up and it'll put straight quantization on by default, which is not generally what you want if you're doing like a rock song or a swinging tune, something like that. So listen back to this drum. It sounds a bit static, doesn't it? Compared to if I turn that quantization off, it's actually gonna sound a lot more natural because it's my actual playing. Mistakes and all. And the other thing is, if you're actually using some swings or some triplet rhythms, yeah, it's going to put it into straight 16th note, and it's just not going to sound good. So you might want to come in and turn your quantization off. It's probably the biggest question I get from folks that they're confused because they play their drums in, they play them in what they think is exactly how they want them to be, and then they play it back and it sounds much different. It sounds worse. And that's because it tries to auto quantize, but you can turn that off just by going into your settings there, going into your quantization and turning it off. Now, blank, we'll just delete those out for now. If I wanted to play an electronic kit, very, very similar way to go here. Let's just change the kit here by tapping on this one, the drum icon there, and we'll just get rid of the settings there. If you tap here to change the kit, it's right here in the middle on your iPad. On your iPhone, you'll have to go to the corner and drop it down and change it there. But if we go to electronic, or percussion, we're going to have different setups here. So let's go to electronic first. We go to the 70s rhythm box. You're going to now play these on pads. So exactly the same sort of thing. You've also got a few, because they're electronic, you've got a few additional controls here that you can change, your low cut and high cut filter, your crush and your drive. You can then go in and do the same sort of thing with percussion. Let's grab the coffee shop percussion. So now we've got like a cajon and some shakers some claps and clicks and pops and ticks and same sort of thing. You've got a drive knob there, you've got a tone knob there. And you'll notice that when I change those, this little light comes on here next to coffee shop. That's because it's saying you've created a custom kit now. So if I tap on this one, what I could do is save this as a custom kit. If I hit the save button there, it asks me to put in a name and I can save in a kit setting. And then here under custom, you can see here that I've done this before. I've saved in the settings for this one for whatever reason. So you can save in your custom presets for different kits and for different sounds if you get a drum kit that you think sounds really cool that you may want to use on future projects. So that's pretty darn cool, yeah. The, the drums are good. There's other ways to use drums such as the beat sequencer and the smart drums. Let's show you those now. Beat sequencer is really cool, really good fun. Whenever my children jump on my, uh, my iPad, they always grab the beat sequencer because it's probably the most fun thing and it's actually nice and colorful. You also have beat sequencer over in GarageBand and on Logic Pro for you Mac users, it's kind of the same thing. So the cool thing about beat sequencer is we can use an acoustic kit. So if we come in here and we grab the Speakeasy brush drum kit. That's a bit of a swing rhythm, isn't it? That we don't really want. 
So we probably wouldn't use that kit. But uh, let's go in here and go the SoCal kit. That's pretty cool, actually. That one might actually work with our, uh, with our groove here. So to record this in, you just hit the record button. Hit the stop button when we're done there. And then that actually just records in these. And this will just basically create a drum track. So if we come down here, why did that not record? What did I do wrong? <laughs> did I not? Did I just play and not record there? Hang on. Great demo, Johns. Uh, you didn't actually record it. Okay, there you go. So you can see there that it actually records in a drum part there. And because it's a consistent sort of two bar riff, we can use that and we can just loop it out. So this is probably the second best way and easiest way to create yourself a, uh, a drum track that can be used as a metronome. Because if instead of the, uh, the drummer track, we use this track, you can hear that it's going to be... It's going to be, yeah, the, the, the same sort of thing that we can use there. And if we bring it all back in together. Again, we can layer up two different drum sounds and use it that way. The other option you have is the smart drums. Smart drums were cool back in the day before we had beat sequencer and drummer. These days, a little bit long in the tooth. So you've only got six kits to choose from, which is a little bit sad. I don't know why they don't just let you have this with all the kits, but we can use, uh, say, the live rock kit, and uh, you can place a drum. And here's the thing. All you do is tap and drag it in, and you either can choose whether your drum beat's going to be simple or complex, quiet or loud. And we simply just place the kick. Well, that's this horrible sounding kick. Let's just go loud and simple. Let's put the snare here. Wow, it's doing it really fast. I don't know why it's doing double time by default. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the uh, of the smart drummer because in my experience, not super smart. One of the cool things you can do though is hit the uh, hit that button, and you can sometimes come across some uh, cool grooves there. Just using that, but. Yeah, I, 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 would, I wouldn't recommend smart drums. There's a link down in the description if you want to check out everything about smart drums that you need to know. Let's, let's look at uh, loops. So another cool and easy way to get yourself a drum beat is to use loops. Now, loops is pretty cool if you're starting out with something, if you don't really know what you want to create and you want to get a groove that you can then build your song around. I'd suggest starting with an Apple loop. And even if you then swap out that Apple loop, with some other drums, it can be a good way to get started and get that inspiration. So your Apple loops are up here in the top right. We're going to tap on that one. And again, you've got very similar loops happening in your regular GarageBand, Mac, and Logic Pro, and other things as well. So we can filter these down if we want to have just, say, uh, the type of loops is that we can either use drummer loops or we can have audio loops or software loops. Uh, I explain those in the video down below. We don't have the time to go into all that here today. You can also search out by instrument, genre, and descriptor. So if we come in here and we want, say, all drums, and we want the genre to be uh, funk, which is kind of what we're going for, we can now uh, try and find some funky drum beats. So let's just go, like, say, the throwback funk beat. Yeah, that's pretty cool, but that's a simplified version. Now, with these numbered ones, usually the further you go down, the more complex they get. I think that's gold. I think that's the sort of thing we'd want. So let's drag this over into our project. And uh, oh, there we go. We need to pop it onto a fresh track, like so. And we'll just bring this one up here. Oh, no, that's cool. Uh, so we'll drag it back to bar number one there so we can have our intro here. And uh, let, let's take a listen to what this one sounds like. We'll mute out these other drums and we'll listen to this drum loop here in our uh, track. Pretty cool, yeah. So that's going to work well there. And if we if we wanted a real sort of mash of sounds, you can mix all of these together, and uh, maybe you'll get maybe we'll get something cool out of this. Maybe we'll just uh, do this. Let's see. Betty starts us off. You can get some really nice things, and then if you like, start playing with your panning. 
can create these wide, funky loop grooves. So don't limit yourself. Don't just use one drum. You can use multiple drums and get some pretty cool sounds here in GarageBand. So a heap of different Apple loops that you can use in there. Obviously, you can use loops for bass and for keys and for all sorts of other things. But drum loops are a great use of that. If you want to make sure you have all of the loops to use, all of the Apple loops, come out here. Tap on your, your little selector there. <laughs> I've got the maximum number of tracks. Wow, it won't let me add any more tracks. I've got the maximum number. Let's just delete out this uh, this track here. Boom, because we need an extra track. So let's come out here. So I just wanted to show you that if you come here, if you go over to the sound library, not to be confused with the library, you can tap on that one, and these are all the additional sound packs. So if you don't have any of these, they'll have a little uh, red lot line, red dot next to them, and you can download them. So for instance, if I didn't have this Alpha Ways, if I tapped it, you can see there I've got it. It says downloaded. If I didn't have it, it would have a little download button that you got there. And you can actually go to manage packs up here in the top left and see all the packs you've got installed, how much of your precious space they're taking up. So mine's taking up three and a half gigabytes if you've got all of them. And you can edit, you can hit the edit button here and remove sound packs if you're not using them. Don't worry though, they're always available to re-download. So if you remove some packs and then you open a project, you're like, darn it, I used the electronic drummers one on that one. Don't stress, you can re-download the pack and it will instantly put that back in your project if you lose it over time. So heaps of different loops in there and cool things that you can do here in GarageBand. There's one more thing, one more way that we're going to show you here to do things. I'm just going to jump on over to here. If you do have questions or comments or anything, please throw them here in the chat. Uh, we'll say good day to some other folks who've dropped in. We've got uh, we've got Russ eighty eight eighty nine, Mister Tremor Bear, and Guzzo. Apparently, yep, there's Guzzo. Uh, hello to you, folks. Hello to nothing pretty about synth. Uh, thank you everyone for being here and uh, Autism Rocks. Rock on my friends. Thank you for being here and uh, if you do have any questions or comments do go ahead and ask those. The reason I jumped out of there is I'm just going to jump into Safari because I'm not sure if I'm logged into this site. One other final way that you can do is you can use any external sound. So whether you've sampled it from a song, I'm not going to judge, whether you've downloaded it from the internet, you've got it from a site like freesound.org or you've uh, brought it in from Bad Lab. Because uh, that's something that I've been trying to, to play around with lately. Because uh, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know. I don't know about this whole band lab thing you've been on about. And I'm like, it's got so many cool sounds in there. Maybe just maybe just use them and bring them over into to GarageBand if you don't want to um, if you don't want to use a completely different uh, door. I've just searched for freedowned.org, which is available if anyone wants to start a website called freedowned.org. You're welcome to. Just go to freesound.org, and I'm just making sure I can sign in here because uh, yeah, I need to put in my credentials. Sometimes I'm not logged in, which I'm not, so I'm just going to log in here. You can sign up for free to uh, to freesound.org because it's called freesound.org. It needs my face. Try my face again. Come on, freeze out. There you go. Uh, I do like the fact that I can use my face, but I did prefer using my thumb. <laughs> I prefer my thumb over my face. So let's uh, let's check out freesound.org and see what this sucker is all about. So here it is on my iPad. I'm using Safari. Always use Safari if you're downloading stuff on your iPad or your iPhone because it has the built-in download manager. It will download. Chrome can download now. They've added that update to it. They all use WebKit anyway. But Safari has the download manager. It's native to iOS and it will throw anything you download straight in to your downloads folder, which can work really well. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we know what our BPM is of our project because it's much easier. 110, cool. It's much easier to find a loop that is at the same BPM. You can change them. GarageBand doesn't do a great job of beat matching if you're bringing in external samples. If you use something like Audio Stretch or BandLab, you can actually change. BandLab actually has Audio Stretch built in. So there's a tip for you. If you uh, don't want to shell out the 15 bucks for Audio Stretch, throw it in BandLab. It uses the Audio Stretch engine. I know. Who knew? So uh, that's, a, that's a cool way to do it. So 110 BPM. So we're going to come back here to freesound.org. We're going to put funky drum... 110. And let's just roll the dice on this and see if we can find a funky drum loop that is 110 BPM. We may not, but we may. Here's a drum loop, 110 BPM. Now, the, the thing here is what I tend to, to recommend. You've got different licenses here. So you do want to make sure that you know what the licensing is all about. So there are three different types of license. There is attribution, there's attribution on commercial, and then there's creative Commons zero. Attribution means that you have to attribute it 
to the original creator, but you can still use it. Attribution non-commercial means you have to attribute it and you can't use it in a commercial release. That's super important because if you're going to sell your song, if you're going to stream it uh, through, you know, even on YouTube, but especially if you're going to release it through DistroKid, you don't want it to use one that has that. But Creative Commons Zero basically means a free-for-all. It's free range. You can use it. The original creator gives you the permission to use it in your track. So we're going to go with that one. This one made in FL Studio. Looks like it's uh, it might be pretty cool. So let's uh, sample this drum loop. We'll just tap on it. When it comes to here, we can hit play. Let's take a listen. That might work with our track. Maybe. Let's try it anyway. So we'll download. We'll just tap on the download button there. It enables, again, this is why you use Safari, because it goes straight into your download manager. It's going to download that and see up in the top here, little download icon. We can tap there. There it is. If we want to go to it, we tap it, and it's going to open it here in our, uh, our what is it called? <laughs> um, uh, QuickTime. So that's saved in our downloads folder. What we can do from here, we can now import this into GarageBand. So let's jump to GarageBand. Let's go to that same loops location here. This time, instead of Apple Loops in the top left, we're going to go to Files. We're going to browse from the Files app. And then we're actually, we can just go straight to Recent here because that's the loop. See, download it today, 10.21 a.m. That's the time here in Australia. I know, time zones are weird. It's also tomorrow. Don't get me started. And we can tap on this one. It's going to import that sound right here into GarageBand. There it is. Now we can uh, preview it. Oh, that's the wrong one, this one. And we can bring it into our project. And because we've chosen a sample, slot it down there, because we've chosen a sample that is 110 BPM, you'll notice that it will line up nicely into four bars with the rest of our stuff and we could just loop it out. So now we can bring all these four different drum types we've created with drummer, drums, uh, Apple Loop, and our brand new loop that we've just downloaded. And let's take a listen. Let's bring my vocal and see if it works with this. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here and if I'm going under all the complications of my life. All the times when I couldn't reach the knife in my back to the days when I was a little kid. Always worry about the things I never did. Always think about the next big problem, even when it's someone else that's on the hook me in. Light and stinker. Ever wonder what it's like to be an overthinker, tinker with all my little thoughts? Maybe it was just the way that I was taught to just believe that I was right. And when I lay in bed at night, the thoughts still going round and round and round and round in my head. Nation's war. I reckon it's pretty cool. I don't know. I think uh, that that's a pretty cool beat. And again, we've done it really simply, really quickly. We haven't done any enhancements. We haven't changed anything up. Remember, you can change your drummer beats up. You can uh, enhance your drums. You don't have to do everything the same. We've just looped everything out here. You can obviously copy and paste and create your own things. It's uh, very cool here. And uh, bonus tip there. Someone was asking me during the week, uh, is it okay to record using just your internal mic or just your, your headset mic? The actual vocals that are included in the released version of this song use the internal mic because I just they sounded fine and I tried to re recreate them and they didn't work and this is them Don't always believe Nations warring everything is burning So yeah don't uh, don't be afraid and look you can even hear that cuz that wasn't even like you could hear the drums in the background cuz I was just recording these literally out loud like you can hear that it's got Don't always believe I'm playing the rest of the track now. I'm just going to get rid of all that. But I'm pretty sure you can hear some significant bleed coming through into these tracks. Let's take a listen. Sometimes it's just imagination. <laughs> yeah, so you can hear that I was just listening to it through my phone and recording. So you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to do good things. Oh, my coffee is very cold. Ooh, nasty. But we've uh, we've done a lot of fun stuff with drums here today. Uh, we have about five, seven minutes left, in fact. If you uh, do have any final questions, uh, get a Brad example. Hope you are doing. I'm being bullied by a group of ladies. By a group of ladies on Clubhouse. Help me. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, Brad. I haven't been on Clubhouse for a very long time. Maybe I need to come over and give Brad a helping hand after the show. I'm probably going to head out for a walk, so maybe I'll do that. Uh, beat sequencer can work, can you? Uh, yeah, you can't. So this is a, a Logic beat sequencer. It's it's big cousin. Uh, you can. You can import sounds and create your own custom kits and things. Unfortunately, the beat sequencer that we have here in GarageBand, and I'm going to have to delete some tracks here so I can show you because we're out of tracks. The beat sequencer here in GarageBand doesn't have the ability to actually add in your own samples. So you can only use the default kits. However, there are ways that you can bring in um, additional sounds from those kits. So there's your default sounds. But if you hit this plus button here, there's additional stuff. Let's turn that off. Oh. <laughs> Stop it. All right, so yeah, so there's additional things here. So you can actually bring in, there's always bonus sounds that are not in the default beat sequencer. So yeah, it's not not as good as the Logic one where you can actually use custom samples and you can do all sorts of cool beat matching, pitch matching and changing. And uh, yeah, yeah, Logic is cool. If you want to, if you want to go next level with this sort of stuff, uh, go with Logic. But um, yeah, for, for, for GarageBand iOS, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit different. Coffee does want to be hot. Uh, yeah, how can I get those cicada hi-hats? Cicada hi-hats? Did, did I have some here in this one? Yeah, no, I've got the maximum number of tracks. It's fine. Um, I'm not sure, mate. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what I did. I did everything so fast here today. I'm not sure what it was. So, uh, yeah, I, I can go and I can go back and try and have a look um, or maybe just rewind and take a look there. Um, let's uh, let's finish off here because we've got a couple more things I wanted to talk about. Uh, my, my rant of the week, after all of that, <clears throat> So rant of the week is um, get help when you need it. So uh, I'm going to be. It's going to be as simple as that. That again, I was talking with um, with Dan, the lonely rocker. And we we're talking about being a lonely rocker and being able to do everything yourself. Doesn't mean you always should. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. So sometimes you will need help, whether it's in life or music. And don't be afraid to reach out for help. And when it comes to drums, I reach out to Jade Star, I reach out to Gary Hubs, I reach out to other folks who know more about drums and are better at drums than I do. And there's no shame in that whatsoever. I learn a lot of stuff and you'll learn a lot of stuff when you reach out to other people as well. There you go. Quickest rant in the history of the world. What's the best way to export drums from GarageBand to another door without the export being too loud? Uh, I mean, it's as simple as turning the volume down, but do th there's a tip that I shared recently, which I got from, might have even been Acer, that you, you put it out there. Um, it didn't work for me for the longest time. Oh, it was Case uh, that gave it to me originally. Uh, it didn't work for the longest time, and then I tried it, and now it does work. So you can just create a really loud noise if, you, if you're worried about the auto normalization. Because here's the problem. Let, let's give you a live example of this. So let's just say that I wanted to take uh, what's what? Which one should I do? I'll just take this, the the drummer track. So I wanted to export this Benny track. I wanted to export this to use in another. Uh, project, but I didn't want it to be too loud. If I put the volume right down like that, even if I export this, it'll still normalize the volume up to the loudest volume setting. I'll show you what I mean. If we come here and we share this, we pop it out and we share it as a song, a high quality web file, it is going to come in here and we'll just open it in, oh, open in audio share, just so that we can take a look at this file. It'll still auto normalize it up to uh, the zero dB basically will take the loudest part of that and normalize it up. Now it doesn't really matter because you can still just turn it down. Here's the thing: people get a little bit worried about this. And look, if you if you've got sounds that are over zero dB and it's having to limit them, that's what sounds terrible. That's where you get that pumping sound and that horrible loud sound. But if it's low and all it's doing is normalizing, it's literally just turning the volume up. So you're still going to have headroom if you just turn the volume back down. So the the key tip there is to always export lower volume. And then you can play around with it. It'll give you enough headroom to be able to play around with it. So we'll, we'll wait for that to finish there. And uh, we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll do the other, I'm going to do these really quickly. I'm not going to show you those, but the plugin, uh, plugin or app of the week I was going to talk about is Rough Rider 3. And that just can add some grit and grunge to your drums. So we've talked about that before. It's a compressor. Uh, in fact, we'll just, we'll just jump over to here. We'll jump to here so we can take a look at uh, that. So if you search my name and Rough, Rider, Rider 3, uh, it is just a good all-round compressor that's free that can actually throw some nice grit and distortion on your drums in a good way. So go and try out Rough Rider 3. And the other thing, uh, which I'll show you in a moment, is 
make some room for your drums by using a high pass filter. And we'll, uh, we'll show you that in just a moment after we open this uh, audio file. So let's jump back over to the iPad and we're gonna hit open in audio share. It's gonna ask me about trash. So see how it's, it's increased the volume there? It's pushed those right up to zero dB and it's gonna be quite loud. But the thing is, if you use this in another door, just import it, drop the volume down a little bit and you'll actually be fine. Uh, you should use Rough Rider. No, it's not uh, <clears throat> It's not Rough Rider. <laughs> yeah, exactly right, Thomas. It takes the louder sound up to zero dB uh, if nothing goes up that loud. And as you saw by the what I had there, it's definitely not going up to zero dB here in the original project. If we just go back into this one. Oh, that's the copy. Hang on. That's the copy it creates before you merge. We need this one. There you go. So you can see here when I'm playing it, it's way down here. But then you saw that exported one, it's way louder. But again, it's just turning it up. So you really don't have to worry about that unless you go too high. So there you go. Um, let's, uh, what was what did I have here? Yeah, so the, the, the um, tip of the week. The other thing that I would mention here is once you've built out your track and you've got everything working for you, You might find that the low end here with your kicks in particular and your bass, you want to then come to your other instruments, especially recorded instruments. So things like your vocals. So let's just listen to this with the vocal section here. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here and if I'm going under. So if you're getting a lot of background noise or low rum or humble or ground loops from electronic interference or things nearby, you may want to add in a high pass filter. So this could help make sure that your drums sit in the mix. because, And you can do that as simply as coming in here to your EQ and just turning down the bass like that. You can use the uh, uh, LRC5 or LRC8 if you want to. So if we come in here and we grab audio unit extension, you can grab LRC5 or 8 and use the high pass filter in that. Or you can literally use the built-in high pass filter, which is probably going to be the least amount of... Uh, pull on your system here to be able to do that and it's a simple one knob thing here so we can just decide at what point do we want that low pass filter to be there and uh, if you're not familiar with what one of these does let's just listen to this with this overdone you can't hear me right because I'm cutting everything below uh, six hertz six kilohertz which is where my vocal is if I bring this down to like one kilohertz thousand hertz now the knife in my back to the days when I was a little kid always worried yeah, so you're only going to hear that. You're going to get that radio, AM radio sound because you've got no bass. But what you can do is if you want to make sure that you're not getting into that rumble, but you're not losing any of the sound of your vocal, if you put the high pass filter in at around 200 hertz, so anything lower than that is not going to be in your vocal range. It's just going to be your kick and your bass guitar. So if we play that now. Worry about the things I never did. Always think about the next big problem, even when it's someone else that's on the hook me in. It's just making sure that your vocal is nice and clean, that any rumble, any low end noise that may be sitting in there and this is great for things like guitars for vocals any recorded instrument that's going to be in there you generally don't need to do this on your virtual instruments unless you've overloaded the bass on that virtual instrument or you've got a bass that's just you know competing too much with your kick drum then you can do this but doing a little high pass filtering on any track where you don't need the low end is a good way to make sure that you get good low end that actually stands out I don't understand the cicada stuff, but I like it. Are the cicadas those weird bugs that live underground for seven years and then come out and make lots of noise and annoy everyone and then leave? Yeah, sounds like um, <laughs> sounds like Coldplay. <laughs> I was trying to think of a band to like to wail on. No, it sounds like Guns and Roses. Go away for seven years, then come back, make a lot of noise, annoy everyone, and then leave. <laughs> Any Gunners fans out there? Oh dear. All right. Um, that is going to do it. We are over time here. But I hope you had some fun. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a few things. You can hit the thumbs up button down below if you did have a good old time. Uh, don't forget, we've got Song Timber coming up. So after this, it'll it'll drop you out into the Song Timber uh, show. Then you'll be able to see, you'll be able to set a reminder. You'll be able to see what time it's going to be in your particular time zone. So you can set yourself a reminder for that one. Uh, I've got a few days off coming up now. So there's going to be a few little pre recorded things that will be coming out for you so uh you can uh, you can check those out um 
this week and then we will be back of course uh, at the end of the week for the weekend for the happy hour for your music live and for next week's garage band weekly is rock and ronnie ward happening yeah it's scheduled for five minutes ago <laughs> Ron's uh, always late to his own party. So there you go. You haven't you haven't missed a thing because you don't want to miss a thing. Uh, do you need Facebook in order to join Stocktamber? No, uh, but uh, it would be a good idea to either join the Facebook group or to uh, join the Discord server. Uh, you can, of course, just be part of the group and rock up here to the live shows and comment in the in the um, the videos. I'll always be there in the comment section, but it's a good idea to uh, to be part of. If you want to be more part of the community, either join the Facebook group or this year, I'll definitely be uh, doing a lot more on uh, on the uh, on that. Um, all right, so I uh, thank you everyone for being here. You can drop on over and say hello to Ron. He's uh, he's, he's running a little late, which means you haven't missed a thing. So uh, I'll I'll throw a link to that one. Go over and say hi, at Rock and Ronnie Ward. Pete Johns says g'day, and you're running late. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, links to the Discord and to the the uh, Create Record Release group are in the link of the uh, the show that uh, the link to the um, the Song Timber launch party, which should be a lot of fun. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for hanging out today. Um, and yeah, there's a, a whole bunch of links down below to all of the other drum related videos that we've got here on the channel if you want to learn all about your garage band drums and look just like that ron ward is about to start go on over say good day tell him pete sent you and uh, we'll see you next week here please be kind to yourself this week be kind to others keep creating for goodness sake and uh, we'll see you next time on the one and only garage band weekly let's go out with a little bit more of this track shall we i think this is sounding pretty hot all the times when i couldn't reach the knife in my back to the days when i was a little kid always worry about the things i never did always thinking about the next big problem even when it's someone else that's on the hook me in light and stinker ever wonder what it's like Bye, to be folks. an overthinker tinker with all my little thoughts